Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to a new series of Age of Wonders 4. It's been a couple of weeks since I finished the last campaign, which was the tutorial really, but I really enjoyed playing it and there's obviously a lot more to see. So I figured I would jump into the sort of story campaign. I figured by now most people who are really interested in the story have probably already got the game and played it themselves or watched it elsewhere so I don't feel that I'm going to be spoiling things too much and as I said in a previous video I don't think these sort of story campaigns in these type of games really are the sort of stories that are going to be spoiled. So let's go in for a new game and we're going to be playing in Valley of the Wonders which is story realm one rise of the god here as an ascended champion build up a new home for your wandering tribe in the mythical valley of wonders on athla prepare yourself for a clash with the returning wizard kings of old and rise in power to claim a greater destiny so the uh, the modifiers for this map we have ancient ruins there are ruins of the ancient elven court to be found on this realm they can be rebuilt to found new cities Crystalline abundance. Mana crystals grow more easily on this realm, making them uh, uh, unusually abundant. And uninhabitable underground. This realm is, has an unusually small, unwelcoming caverns. The underground is smaller. No throne city can be placed underground. But it doesn't say no city can be placed underground, just specifically um, throne cities. So we will go into this. I'm just going to play it on easy because that's where I was having fun. Now, even though this is a story mode, you can still pick your uh, faction or even create your own. The only ones you can't pick are ones that start underground because you can't have a throne city in the underground. The ones that start there, we cannot play. In the tutorial mission, I played Fangir of the Moonrock Dwarves. For this one, I'm going to be playing as Arik Rex the Faithful Tigrans. Now, as far as I'm aware, this particular race was a pre-order bonus. So I'll just quickly rattle through the things that uh, we have. So we start, our champion starts with the Tome of Zeal, which gives us uh, order affinity this time around. Um, units with zeal so our base attacks deal spirit damage and is doubled against condemned units units that are condemned also receive minus three status resistance we have a, a special province improvement called the circle of zealotry it gives us 10 draft per positive or negative level of alignment plus two city stability put for adjacent province improvement so we should be able to keep stability quite high um unit deployment location so we can actually get units to spawn there and it counts as a quarry which is quite nice uh we've got that condemn ability so it is a combat ability it has a two turn cooldown range of four always hits and it makes the unit become condemned which we spoke about before uh we won't go through all the various research there and we are the faithful Tigrans, so we are resolute. So negative status effects last one turn less with a minimum of one turn. We're adaptable, so we get 30% experience from fighting. So our units should level up quicker. Our culture is high, so our structures have stability and knowledge income. Units are strengthened with awakened, revealing their hidden potential. So that gives plus four uh, spirit damage on base attacks. 10% alignment to good, so we will be heading towards good. And we have an alignment agenda. So pure good gives us more stability in our cities. Neutral gives us food and production uh, city stability level. And if we go full evil units start combat in the waking state. We're imperialists, so the throne city and shit cities that... It's not shitties. The throne city and cities that share a border with the throne city gain 20 city stability and 20 gold income and the capital city starts with the next population and finally great builders quarries give us an extra two gold special province improvements cost 50 percent less production and the capital city also starts with a workshop and stone walls so quite a nice little starting race oh and we also uh starting equipment we start with a mount a very fast movement unit that gives us 48 movement on the world map let's hop on in It was the time when the raw forces of magic returned to Athla. The seal that had protected the world was shattered. The cosmic currents thereby unleashed shaped the land, changing what was whilst returning what once may have been. In the wake of this new genesis, the great empires of the Third Age fell into decline 
bringing on an era of re-exploration and expansion. Alas, the time for peaceful discovery was brief. For the ancient wizards of the Second Age broke free from their eldritch prisons in the depths of the Astral Sea. Their strength regained, they set out to rule over the surviving peoples as God Kings, or Godia. There was little divine about them. Yaka, Nimue, Carissa, a pantheon of pretender gods. They were scarred, corrupted, haunted by millennia of torment, and ready to unleash their newfound powers against whoever dared stand in their way. Yet the wizard kings were not unchallenged. Mortal champions rose to the defense of their people, rebuilding their realms and learning to channel the currents of magic. This is the story of one such champion. While traveling through the Valley of Wonders in search of a new home, Tragedy befell his tribe, its elder slain by a magical being. After inheriting both the elder's throne and his powerful tome of magic, the young champion had to rise up and protect his people from the dangers that awaited. Okay, so so far the introduction to the story um, just seems quite boilerplate and cliche. Uh, magical, imprisoned, evil wizards escape from their prisons, become a bunch of pretender guards, are really crappy to all the people of the planet they control over. We have inherited the leadership of our tribe and we've got to try and um, help the tribe flourish and no doubt we'll end up against these evil gods. So we've already read through all of this, so not to worry too much about that. So starting magic, we can summon a zealot, which is a melee fighter unit, and we can awaken our inner radiance. Um, friendly units in a one hex radius become awakened for three turns. If already awakened, the unit regrants, uh, gets strengthened instead. So we already start with a battle quest, which is to build a farm and slay three units. Long have the faithful Chigwins wandered Athla as exiles, O Golden Herald Ar Aric Rex. By leading them into this valley, you have returned to them their hope. The proud city of Syracourt represents a new beginning for your people. They are eager to stride beyond the city gates and claim surrounding land as their own. To expand your domain, hunt down the creatures near Syracourt and grow a new population and place your first farm. Sure. Uh, so what have we got here? This is a... I'm guessing that's just a scout. And then this is our main army here. So we've got our leader, who is melee. We've got a support unit, who has uh, healing, and the awaken ability, and a ranged magic attack. We've got two melee fighters, so basically just shield units, and we've got an archer and we'll probably want to get something else in there as well uh, we can possibly can we get that early summon zealot it's going to cost 60 so we can't really get it on this turn let's let's grab it anyway let's then we can get it for the next turn um so orders are required let's have a look at our city because we're not producing anything here right now there are various things that we're going to want um, we do start with an extra population, right? We can place that straight away. So I think we actually go ahead and get the farm because we've got we've got the quest for that anyway. So let's place a farm in an area where we don't have many others. Like this is the only one where we can place a research post. So let's not put the farm here. So let's go and get the farm up on this one at the top. So that's one objective completed. Now that should have boosted something else. It's boosted the vendor. And that will give us more money. Might be worth having that early on. So let's start working on the vendor actually as that's boosted. We need to set our arcane research. So we can get warding blessing. So it's a healing and buff spell. 
could be useful. We can get the Wayfinder enchantment, which makes our scouts faster, basically. And the Enchanted Crow, which also gives our scouts the better vision range, basically. Um, let's go for the Wayfinder enchantment. And we'll start picking on some of these other units. Uh, we won't go too far with our scout. But we can see we've got units close by. Uh, oh, we need to... Um, train a unit also. Uh, we do not have one of these magical units. That's not a magical unit. So, oh, that's, that's our scout, of course it is. Uh, let's get another ranged unit then for that army. Uh, it'll obviously take a few turns to get, so let's go and fight what we've got here. So it says this is a safe battle. I will go and manual combat it so we can have a look at our units. We've got this Gortusk Piglet and an Arbalest, which we should be able to deal with quite easily. So again, I am the attacker. The, the AI will move first. So I can move very, very far because I am a mounted unit. But I will just move forward a little bit and uh, give everyone the option or the opportunity to move up towards me. So let's move forward with my units. We'll flank if we can. Yeah, we can. We will flank our hero. We'll put the healer mage type at the back and the archer as well which excels at dealing physical damage uh we don't really need to change there i guess we could change your facing outwards in case somebody does try and sneak around that way but i don't think it's going to be a problem so we don't have any spells that we can oh we can't cast spells in turn one anyway not usually there are ways of doing it but oh and i've got this uh, the scouts in as well i pulled the scout into this fight um which is fine. I mean, we can put the scout here in the trees. We got that scout was close enough to get pulled in. So they haven't moved particularly far forward. Uh, so we can uh, awaken in a radiance. Friendly units in a one hex radius become awakened for three turns. Well, I mean, we're all stacked together on top of each other. I guess what we could do here is bring the scout in. Don't have to do this, but if I bring the scout in... And then I can basically hit every single unit here and awaken them all. So we could just charge in, but I feel that um, being able to do some sort of ranged attack first might be more beneficial. Don't really have any great places we can aim from. Let's move over here because we are then kind of hidden in cover. So we'll shoot the bow. Did a little bit of damage. Uh, now I think what we do here is we just charge straight in with our hero. We will take a retaliation hit from this, but you know your hero is quite tanky, and that's the point. They only take retaliation once, and you know we can heal them if we need to as well, or we can go for a, a ranged attack. So this unit can actually awaken individual units with this ability, but we don't need to worry about that. I don't want to move too far forward with you. I don't want to put you into danger. And there is this ranged unit at the back. So let's attack you. Don't need to worry about healing our hero yet. And then we've got these two units here. So let's move in with both. You are going to attack that unit and finish it off. It's already used its retaliation this turn. Um, you are going to defend. And then we'll start moving back up again with the scout. So uh, you can't reach from there. So the Arbalest will shoot at somebody now. Oh, he's actually going around the back. He's got a massive penalty to his... Um, morale so he's hardly tickling us so we can do a ranged attack they are bolstering so reasonably low chance to hit here and we did indeed we missed we grazed twice not the end of the world 50 percent chance to hit with the arch from there 
actually hit my own unit there. Didn't even realize that was a thing. Apparently it is. There's no point healing during the match or during the, the fight because um, it's only temporary hit points. So let's just worry about getting rid of the enemies. And it looks like we're going to do it because we're getting the slow-mo zoom in thing. There we go. So we took a little bit of damage, but it was a, you know, it, it, we won. Got some uh, mana for doing that as well. Now, can we reach down here? No, we can't. Our movement isn't quite close enough for that, but we can actually cheese it. Also, why didn't that count as units slain? Did we not just slay some units? Anyway, I've moved forward over to be closer to this, and what I'm going to do now is attack with the scout, because that will then allow me to bring the army in. So again, we're going for manual combat. We've only got two to deal with. Same deal as before. The AI is going to move first because they are the defender. So where is my scout? Scout is all the way over here. Can't get the scout all that close really. But let's try and get people a little bit closer together. So I'm going to move forward with you. And we're going to try and get everybody reasonably close together. I'm actually going to get my scout to um, heal on you now can we get everybody else in close enough I don't think I'm not going to be able to hit everybody because of the position that I've I've put them in uh, although we can't do it till the next turn anyway so not to worry too much yeah let's just get everybody to um, just defend up they are melee units so they are gonna have to get in close and they're not they're not that bothered about getting in close to be honest um yeah i'm just going to go around here with the scout and then we can pop the buff here and we get everybody again so that's fine so let's go for a ranged attack first we can move around to here we've got a 70 percent chance of hitting this one and we're not going to shoot one of our own units in the back Okay, that wasn't a great amount of damage, but that was fine. Uh, our scout is kind of stuck in there now. So, I could try and get around the back of these units. But I think what I'm going to do first... ...is I'm going to move in with you, which will lock things down. But I'm not going to attack with you. Um, I'm going to move around with this guy. And I will get him to do an attack here. So we will get a retaliation, but that's fine. That one was on uh, a lower health anyway. And we'll charge straight in with our hero. So again, we'll take a retaliation hit. And now we're pinned down. And nobody, nobody else can do anything. Oh, you've still got some ability left. You could, you're a little bit out of range. But I could move you in. Uh, let's see if we can hit this unit. That hit my own unit in the back. Unfortunately, it was a miss. So we're going to take you and get you to defend. So that'll bolster the units standing either side of you. Yeah, everybody else is out of range. So let's hit end turn. So we'll take a couple of cuts and bruises here, but... They're not going to be able to finish us off. Yeah, it's not going good for them. Uh, is there a better spot that I can get? If I get right behind you, that'll negate the penalty of having a, something in the way. Because something being in the way doesn't count if you are literally right next to it. Now, there is a possibility of shooting my own units in the back here. Let's hope we don't. Grazed. Grazed. And another hit move forward with our archer no line of sight interesting uh, well we should be able to take you out 50% chance there we go one unit down 
And we can't really get around behind this without triggering retaliation because we are in its zone of control. So we might as well just go and uh, do, it do it the hard way. Okay, so there's another victory. And that for that we get mana and we get the Wand of Rising Undead. So, um, always hits, has a range of four, costs all three movement, or well, all three action points to use. Uh, friendly undead corpses are revived with 60% of their total hit points. Well, we're not playing a race that uses undead units at this point. Um, a non-undead corpse is raised as a zombie. Cannot be used when within enemy zone of control. Can only be used once per battle. Not I, not particularly great, is it really? Um, I'm wondering if that can be used on dead enemies and raise them up to be mine. Also not sure why unit slain isn't being counted here. Because I have slain units. And hunt down the creatures. Oh, is, are, there, are there specific creatures oh it's these specific ones i've got to get ah that's why i should have clicked on that first really shouldn't i um that's all right uh, let's go in, in and look at our hero because we do have a point that we can spend defense and evasion might not be too bad or just let's just let's just buff his melee attack actually he's a melee unit so let's just let's just make him really chunky uh, these slots are empty. We might as well give him the wand. There's no reason for him not to have it right now while we don't have any other one, uh, anyone else to give it to and all of his slots are empty. So that's not too bad. Uh, orders for the scout. I mean, there aren't really many places that you can go. Uh, let's end the turn before we end the video just to see what's going on. Uh, mending the Schism, uh, Befriend City Quest, Pact of Vassalage with Pinnacle. Following upon a long debate, one of the Sun Priests from Syracor approaches you, eager to speak. As you know, my Golden Herald, not all of those faithful Tigrans had the wisdom to follow you, your lead to Syracor. Some became fearful of magic that the Elder passed on to you, our Golden Herald. They stayed within the Aiden Lightbringer to be found to found Pinnacle on their own. Will you seek out an ally with Pinnacle and reunite the faithful Tigrants? Well, we don't want to go evil, so we don't want to decline. But yeah, I mean, obviously we're going to do it. We'll get race relation and a mystery bonus. So they are... Is that an enemy city? Does it tell me where they are? Oh, they're down here. Okay. So I need to send my scout down there as quickly as possible and try and uh, befriend them. Uh, we've got a spell ready, so we can summon that uh, zealot. So let's go ahead and do that and add them to the army. Well, I'll kick them out once we get that. Um... No, we didn't have a second archer, did we? What was I actually working on here? I've forgotten already. No, it was a second archer. So when we get the second archer, I'll probably kick them out. Because we do have quite a lot of melee units in there. Um... But yeah, that's not a, not a bad first turn. I'm going to leave things there because obviously we are over 20 minutes in. And we've done a couple of battles. And then when we come back next time, we'll be able to go off and start doing these quests. Hopefully what I learned in the tutorial uh, campaign will prepare me a bit for this and speed things up a little bit. Uh, I just want to have a quick look at the diplomatic overview. So there are two other rulers. So there's only three of us altogether. It's not actually showing the other the other three cities. Maybe it's only ones we've found, but yeah. So there are three there are three rulers, including myself, making a decent amount of gold here as well. The output from our uh, capital city is actually quite good. Decent food, decent knowledge, but bearing in mind that those advantages, those perks on the map, they are map wide, so they don't just affect myself; they affect everyone on the map. But I'm sure we will make good use of it. So, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video of Age of Wonders 4. I do hope you'll stick around and continue to watch the rest of the series. I will see you on the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.